Hey guys, in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to create this cool vector illustration in Illustrator. This video is actually a collaboration with my friend Cosmin. So you can check out his YouTube channel. His name is Cosmin Serban. Hopefully I said it right, but he does a lot of cool texturing and flat illustration tutorials. So you can definitely check out his tutorial for more. And he'll also post the other video um, showing you how to texture and add some grain effects to the illustration. So let's jump into it. So you can see I did some other versions of different colors as well. But first we started off with a sketch. So Cosmin sent me a sketch here. And if I go to the video, he actually shows you how he sketched it out. So he just sketched it out in uh, on his iPad in Procreate, um, just with like a basic brush and a pen tool. So you can see he, how he developed the, the artwork there. And yeah, he did that sketch. And I'll just skip to the end. And that's the final version of it. And then I brought it into Illustrator. So you can literally drag and drop it in. You can make the artboard any size you want. It doesn't have to be big, just I just did a square. And I'm just gonna bring my toolbars up. I'll open my layers. So you can see what I did, I put the sketch on a layer by itself. So you can see, I'm gonna unlock this layer. Typically with the sketch, you can you know drop the opacity down by 50% or whatever it is. And you wanna put it below. So I'm just going to uh, make a layer over here, drag the sketch, just gonna scale it up. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to lock this layer. So now I have my sketch layer locked. And what I can do now is I, I can actually design over it. Let's bring the sketch layer at the bottom. So now I can go to my design layer and you can make a new layer by clicking the little button here. So I can, you know, draw over it. Another cool trick as well is if you want to see what's happening, you can change the blending mode to like multiply. So I can see the sketch uh, at the bottom. So I'm going to be using the pen tool and the shape tools. So first off, we'll start off with the body. So I'm going to press P for the pen tool and I'm going to start to trace over the sketch. So I'm just left click once and then as I'm going, I'm just clicking and dragging as I need to get that curve. And then I can go in here. If you press A, you can get the direct selection tool and I can drag it like this. Which is cool. I'll put the multiply um, on like this. So you guys can see. And it's okay that I create the shape outside of the circle because it's going to get cut off later anyway. And typically when you do this type of method, when you're building vector building, you just want to focus on the simple shapes. For example, I'm going to build other shapes for the skin section and the arm section here. So we have our core um, shape here and we can just leave it like that. And then get the pen tool again, start from the bottom. You can hold shift to if you want to keep the, the um, constraints. I'm also just going to change uh, the I'm also going to change the color of the stroke so we can just see what's happening. I'll just change it to red for now. There we go. Press P, P tool, click back. And then I'm going to go through this. And I'll just make it gray. And I can change the multiply. Awesome. It's good to start with grayscale just so later on we can do the coloring and it's just easy to, you know, how I did here, you can see the layers. So I get the pen tool again, go through here. Sometimes I hold shift to get like a cleaner curve. Let me have that. I'll just change it to multiply. Another trick you can do as well, if you want to change everything to multiply, I can click the target layer and you can see, then I can change the blend mode to multiply. So it, it should make everything multiply as you can see. And then we can change it back later on. So I'm gonna start to build out some of these other shapes. I'll press L for the ellipse tool. So you can see the ellipse tool is on the left hand side here. And what I can actually do is, you know, make a circle. I'm holding Alt and left clicking and dragging. Which is really cool. And then for the hair, I can just do a path. 
So I'll use the pen tool, drag out a path like this. I'll start to build up the head now. So I'll make one shape just for the shape of the head. So I don't complicate things. So I've got a shape for the head there. So let's make some circles here. I'll duplicate the circle by pressing Control C, Control F. Like this. I'll make it dark, a darker gray so we can see that. Bring this up. If you find a shape going behind a shape, then what you can do is you can go to Object, Arrange, Bring to Front or Bring Forward. The shortcut keys are obviously there um, when you select it. You can see the shortcut keys here. Th those are the shortcuts I use, Control, um, Square Bracket. And for the lips here, I'm just booting it out. And I can build a shape for the inside of the lip here. Just like an inside bit. And obviously, you don't want to make it too thick or it might look a bit weird. So just, you want to, you want to make it like very thin. And then I've got to do the hair, so basic shapes with the pen tool, left clicking, and then I can click outside of it. So remember, I can create whatever on the outside because it's going to get cut off. And then I'll change the color so we can see. Then I'll do the other side of the hair. And then I'll do the nose here. Or with the pen tool. I know some people might hate the pen tool, but once you get really good at it, it's actually pretty easy. And I can leave that as a stroke there. And then I can do this as a stroke as well. And just I'll just make it thicker. So if you go to your stroke panel, you can go to window and click on stroke. Shortcut keys, control F10, and then you can make it bigger. I'll make this one a little bigger too. I'm going to make the two circles behind as well. And press Control C, Control F to duplicate it. And it will duplicate at the back. And I'll bring it to the back. I'll make it very light. The same for this one as well. Uh, and then I'll go to color. I'll just make it a little bit lighter. So we can see the two layers and so that's all our vector shapes built. So now I'm going to pretty much cut out the excess. So the best way to do this is using the shape builder tool. You can also use the pathfinder tools as well. So you can use the second shape mode, which is to minus front. So typically what I'll do, I have this, this bottom shape here, right? I'll just drag it out so you have example. So you can see I got this bottom shape and I got this shape. So what I can actually do is select it, press Shift M, which is for the Shape Builder tool. It's also located on the left hand side, so you can see here. And then what I can do is I can hold Alt or Option, and then I can left click and it will start to minus off any shape that I put my mouse over. So you can see how it selects the area, and I can click that. So now it minus off the excess shape, and now I've got this shape and this shape together, which is really cool. So I'm pretty much going to do that here. I'm also just going to turn off the multiply so I can click this button here and then go to the transparency and click on normal. And now it should change everything back. So I'll just select everything and click on normal as well and should change everything back. So now you can see I just got all the shapes here. So I'll go through here. I want to select the shape, hold shift, select the other shape, press shift M and hold alt and then I'm going to minus that. I can also do it for this one. So I'll minus these, these bits off like that. If I need to adjust anything, I can adjust. Gotta fix.
fix the hair so I can minus the hair off. This, see this skin bit, this needs to be the same color. So I'll select these two shapes and then instead of holding option, I'll just leave it. And you can see the little plus next to my mouse key. I can select these two and plus them together. So now I've got this one shape and I'll change the color just a lot, so it goes back like that. We have this stroke which we can leave there. And then we have this, the E. I'm just going to adjust the neck so it's behind the head there. And this stroke is fine. And there we have it. We've got all our shapes built out. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to add some reflections on the glasses. So what I'll do, I'll press M for the rectangle tool. I'll drag out a box. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to press A and select the top two. Hold shift and I'm going to drag it like this. So I'm, I'm pretty much shearing the square or the rectangle. I'm going to make it lighter so we can see. I'll make it white. And then I'm going to drag it over the glasses and then I can duplicate it. It's a little thick so um, what I'll do, I'll select, press A for the direct selection tool, select the two anchor points and just scale that in like that. Then I'm going to do this, duplicate it holding Alt. So if you hold Alt and Shift, it'll duplicate it and keep it symmetrical and parallel. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to hold Shift, select the two white bars and then the grey part of the glasses. Press Shift M for the shape of the tool, and then I'm going to go minus the excess off there, like that. I can also select these things together. I can hold Alt and Shift, and I can just duplicate it and drag it over here. So I deleted the other circle, and I just duplicated it just so it's easier. So now we've got our illustration all ready to go, and just before we do that, I got to cut off this excess stuff. So you can see the circle at the back. Um, what I'm going to do is just scale it a little bit so just make sure everything's aligned so you can see here it's not really aligned so I'm just gonna drag this down like that now I'm gonna select the circle and select these bottom shapes and then I'll cut off the excess here as you can see I'll cut off that and with the arm we can adjust the arm as well and I can like bring it If it's snapping to the pixel, go to view and then you can just click the snap to pixel off to fix that and then just like that. Sweet. Amazing. So we've got our final illustration. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to press shift over the eyeball tool and I'm just going to duplicate this. Amazing. Bring my layers here. And now we're going to start to color it. So for color, what I did, I borrowed a color palette. So I went on dribble and there's plenty of things you can type in. I saw a post from Envision, so I'm going to scroll down here. There's plenty of color palettes you can borrow, but I saw this design here, this illustration. It had some nice colors. So what I did, I just screenshot and I borrowed some of the colors. And you can also, on Dribbble, it gives you the color palette here. So you can actually copy the hex code and, or click on the color and it will show you more colors, uh, designs of the same color, which is really cool. So I brought the, the colors inside my swatches, as you can see here. And now I'm going to start to color it. So as I go, I'm just going to play around first. I'm holding shift, just selecting all the shapes and just playing around using contrast as well. So thinking of how can it work? If it's a stroke, you can see that you want to click the stroke and then press the color. So it doesn't add a feel because if you add a feel, it will start to do um, this weird thing where it will start to add a feel, but you don't want that for the strokes. I'll do the same for this one. I can get the eyedropper tool by pressing I and selecting the stroke. And you can see it will copy the style there. And I'll do the same for this bit. Select those two strokes, press I and then select that stroke. And if it's a bit thick, I can always go and edit it. And I can always like tweak um, tweak the stroke in the path if I want. It's not looking like the way I want it. So that's a thing as well. And then for, for the reflection, what I, I like to do is I go to my transparency panel. So you can see I'm on my transparency. 
you can go to window transparency to open that up. And I like to play around with the blending mode. So if I just scroll my mouse wheel, I typically go through and look at what's going to work. So typically like co color dodge overlay or um, soft light works. So for example, if I go to overlay, I can drop the opacity down, but it's a bit, a little bit too dark. So, you know, I can try screen, I can drop the opacity down to 30% or 50%. As you can see, it gets a cool effect. I can go to color dodge, soft light even. I can also use a lighter color. So I can, you know, play around with the colors, see what effect it's going to give me. And obviously, I don't want it to be too harsh. Or you could just leave it white like that. So it's all about playing around, experimenting. Over here, you can see that I added the white and the added the thing there. So change it to white. Then I'll go to overlay. Play around. Then I'll drop this like that. And then I've got a little thing here. Maybe make that pink. Now what I want to do, I'm going to color the backgrounds. So, you know, you can play around. Maybe you want purple, pink. There's so many ways you can do it. And then if I just, you know, copy one of these ones here, you can see. I'll just copy these. And I like to add like a nice color. And then I'll, I'll drop a color on the back here with a, just a simple box. And then I'll make it that dark blue. And if I, I can delete this circle if I want. I can make it lighter. So if I can go to my transparency panel, maybe I can go to multiply. Like 60% to get this like cool circle thing going. And pretty much there we have it. That's how you create this cool illustration. And it's very fun being able to, you know, create something from a sketch and using simple basic shapes. You know, you have control and I can move things around and I can change the colors whenever I want. Um, I can place a box over it as well. And I can go to color or I can go to hue and play around that way. That's another way to color it as well. So thanks guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. Remember to go to Cosman's channel to see the other half of the video where he'll show you how to texture and add some grain to the illustration. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Remember to like, subscribe and comment for more content every week. And I hope you have an amazing weekend.